New areas of interest lighting up the tropics on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 26. Across the world right now, the tropics are generally quite quiet, but there are a few areas of interest that we're monitoring right now, uh, one of them already active over the Philippines, and we're looking across the Atlantic for possibly more areas of interest to develop later on in this week into next week. And we'll take a look at that in just a sec. This is day 26 of hurricane season. We've got a 10% area of interest, 94L, in the Central Caribbean, and a 30% area of interest in the open Atlantic there, the main development region, um, which some models are touting as an early start to the main region of hurricane season there, and it may well happen. In the Eastern Pacific, we've got no areas of interest in this very sorry basin right now, still waiting for its first tropical cyclone and on course to be one of the latest starts since 1964. Day 43 of hurricane season here and it's still just as quiet as when it started. In the western pacific we're giving a 30% chance this area of interest that's sweeping through the Philippine Islands right now. Uh, it very, looks very marginal as to whether it becomes a tropical cyclone or not but it could happen at any time. There is some weak rotation on it at the moment and it's going to be delivering localized flooding. No areas of interest in the North Indian Ocean right now. Sometimes we can see them around about this time of year, uh, but it's very uh, monsoonal in its pattern right now with a lot of storms brushing up along the coast of India. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, for what it's worth, there's a few little thunderstorms up there, uh, but really very little going on in this basin right now. Obviously, we're well into the off-season in the southern hemisphere, but we thought we'd give you a cursory look at this region. So what's the top story? I suppose it's the area of interest in the Atlantic, which is starting to look better already out in the open waters. It's 669 kilometers from the remote Belmonte Island, part of Brazil, 2305 from Belém, 2840 from Paramaribo, 3489 from Trinidad, and 4121 from Puerto Rico. So basically, it's very far away from anywhere. It is at a low latitude, around 7 degrees north at the moment, about 30 degrees west over the main development region of the Atlantic. Quite a low latitude, as you would expect, for a fairly early system for this region. So let's check satellite imagery. First of all, looking at the Caribbean region, and it's difficult to actually find that Invest 94L anymore. It's somewhere to the northwest of Venezuela and Colombia uh, and starting to move towards Central America, which is going to have a lot more rain once again. And this is the other area of interest across the open Atlantic. They haven't given an Invest tag on this yet. I'm not sure why. They probably should by now. And you can see it quite clearly there, the scattering of thunderstorms, not particularly well organized yet, uh, but indications are that it is going to improve over the next few days currently giving about 25 mile per hour winds and about a pressure of 10 13 millibars now this is the one uh, that's just north of Colombia right now uh, there is a few s storms to the north of it there thunderstorms uh, but really we're looking at very little on this system right now and it may well get dropped shortly 10% uh, I think is a fair assessment on this uh, some computer models haven't given up on it. The CMC still wants it to develop into a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, just like Alberto. Uh, so, well, we'll wait and see what happens with that. But it looks like it is going to be sinking quite far south and it is going to be contending with a lot of land. And that's radar, what little of it we could see there. Uh, this is the Western Pacific System, Invest 98W, moving through Mindanao right now in the southern Philippine Islands. Uh, currently containing winds, probably 30 to 35 mile per hour winds, uh, and a pressure estimate of about 1,009 millibars. Currently moving westwards, expected to turn northwestwards very shortly, and there's always the chance that it could become a small tropical cyclone. It doesn't look like it's going to get very strong, maybe 35 or 40 miles per hour at peak. It's expected to curve towards the north. 
Now this is the wide view of the eastern seaboard of the United States. There's a little system there off the Bahamas, but we're not really concerned about that one. Now looking down into the Caribbean once again on this geocolor imagery, you can see daylight starting to appear. A lot of dry air and Saharan dust over the Lesser Antilles right now looking at that imagery. That's what I'm picking up. And this is the eastern Atlantic looking at a similar story there. Uh, a lot of Saharan dust in those uh, subtropical zones. And this is the uh, Central American region into the eastern Pacific once again. Uh, very much a flagging basin right now, the eastern Pacific. and really struggling to get anything going over there. This is the western Pacific, the Philippine Islands caked in tons of uh, convective clouds there and lots of heavy rainfall over the whole region, especially further east. And this is the Bay of Bengal, which is even more um, populated with storms and rain all over the place there on satellite imagery. Lots of cloud cover and this is the Arabian Sea, where you can see a lot of uh, monsoonal showers just off the coast of India and some significant thunderstorms, chunky thunderstorms up there in the north and northwest of India. Well, sea surface temperatures have actually decreased a little bit, but it's not that surprising. As we get into June and July, uh, the rainfall picks up in the monsoonal zones and the gyric zones, and those temperatures can drop a little bit. But in general, they're still looking very good, and the, co and the coverage of 26 degrees Celsius waters is extending across the Atlantic right now. Of course, where that other system is right now in the open Atlantic, temperatures still looking good there as well, 27 to 28 degrees. Western Pacific, extremely warm around the Philippine Islands, pushing 32 degrees degrees Celsius in a few spots and those temperatures warming up further north as well across the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. And in the North Indian Ocean those temperatures are still looking good as well and actually creeping back up again a little bit in the Bay of Bengal especially further west temperatures approaching 31 to 32 degrees once again. So looking good in general terms there. The anomalies are still very warm in the Atlantic, around 3 to 4 degrees above average in one or two spots. The eastern Pacific is getting a little bit more normalized, and the western Pacific has a la large bulk there of temperatures above average, 2 to 3 degrees generally. North Indian Ocean is hovering above the normal as well. Where are we up to with the La Nina? Well, it's still sort of there in the uh, equatorial zone of the eastern Pacific and some cool spots there in the Atlantic as well along the equator as well, which is interesting. Now, this is the oceanic heat content, which is still decreasing a little bit in the eastern Pacific, so it really hasn't got much going for it, has it? But still a few spots that are looking good further out to sea there. And of course, the western Pacific is uh, really showing huge amounts of energy across the Philippine Sea. The envelope has widened a little bit in the Caribbean as well for the oceanic heat content high values there. All around Jamaica and Haiti are the hot spots right now, uh, but plenty of areas extending through the Lesser Antilles and into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days first of all. You'll see something to do with Invest 94L on the left hand side. Looks like it piles right into Central America, Nicaragua and Honduras. And then this system that forms later on, the GFS is very uh, bodacious with this system becoming a substantial hurricane within the five day period as it heads towards the Windward Islands there. Uh, so not unheard of to see something like this uh, at this time of year. And, more likely than not to be honest uh, if we do get a storm in that area that it do get quite strong and this is the western pacific zone then looking at this potential system trying to get a circulation there in the south china sea and then eventually moving off towards the northeast along the coast of china and up through uh, the channel between china and taiwan right there so a system that might produce storm force winds for a short period over the central philippine islands it looks like it will uh, evolve again it will remain quite broad and really struggle to develop we didn't get to talk that much about that Atlantic system, but looking at the rainfall expectations over the next uh, seven days, uh, you'll eventually see the trail that that potential hurricane produces as it moves towards the Windward Islands. There you can see it towards the end there. But apart from that, there will also be localized heavy rainfall over parts of Central America and Mexico as well. Some of it to do with Invest 94L. But first of all, maximums approaching eight inches according to the GFS model there from that system in the main development region. That's 200 millimeters and probably double that in parts of central eastern Mexico, um, especially in Veracruz. 
Well, let's take a look at the longer range at that Atlantic hurricane. There it is sweeping through those southern islands, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines probably, or Grenada, and then moving on towards the west. Uh, really gets quite strong, and another system forming behind it, by the way, becoming a brief tropical storm. Uh, but the GFS is projecting that system to peak with pressure in the upper 970s and probably to get to Category 2 status there. Now, it is only the GFS saying that at the moment. Other models aren't anywhere near as keen as that. Uh, Euro model doesn't really want it to form yet. CMC does have a tropical storm. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. And are still waiting for Hode t-shirts. We'll keep shifting them until that blasted storm forms. Well, in the silly range, uh, could it finally be the kickoff point for the Eastern Pacific? I do have to tell you that if we get beyond July 6th, it will be the latest start to the Eastern Pacific in the satellite era, going back uh, with the previous latest start would be 1957 by that point. And there it is, a very broad storm trying to become a hurricane towards the end of that loop there. It forms around about July 8th or 9th there, and then out over the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Um, really would be a, a slow clap moment there for the Eastern Pacific as it finally gets its first storm. Well, on this day in 1986, it was a busy period around the uh, Central American region and North American region, uh, with Hurricane Bonnie approaching the coast of Texas, making landfall there as that r fantastic radar imagery uh, shows. Uh, had a decent looking core as we look at that imagery. We also had Tropical Storm Celia in the Eastern Pacific, and we had what was left of Typhoon Nancy, which was just moving through uh, what was left of eastern Japan there out towards the North Pacific as an extra tropical storm. On this day, 38 years ago. Well, back to today then. The next name in the Atlantic is still Beryl. Some people think we should have already had it. In the Eastern Pacific, the next name, or the first name still, is Aletta. And in the Central Pacific, uh, of course, we are still waiting for Hone. So the Eastern Pacific will feel a little bit happy to find out that the Central Pacific's been waiting for five years for that storm. In the Western Pacific, the next name is uh, Gami. And in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Asna. We're still stuck at just 21 storms so far, which is 40% below average by this point in the year. We've really had a very slow start. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Southwest Indian Ocean is Jeremy if it's in the next four days, otherwise it will roll over. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.